Good morning, I'm Harley Schlanger from the LaRouche Organization with your daily video update for March 6, 2023. Now, I know there are many of you out there who have rejected the idea that we could be facing a nuclear war over the Ukraine situation. And I, I want to tell you that there are ample reasons to be alarmed by the current situation. But you think that, well, maybe this is a scare tactic to design, designed to convince you that there's nothing you can do, that it's not going to happen, and you just have to go along with the policy. Or others think no one is that crazy. Well, Helga Zepp-LaRouche has just written an article for this coming issue of the Executive Intelligence Review titled World War III or Peace, Support China's Peace Plan. I want to review the main point she makes because it gets right at this question of why you should be concerned about the prospects of a nuclear war, but what we can do to prevent it. Now, the Chinese peace plan is a 12-point plan, which is based on recognizing that there are legitimate security interests of every sovereign nation, and that must be the basis of negotiations and diplomacy. It calls for an end of fighting and resuming peace talks. And it has a number of other points, but all of them essentially emphasize the importance of diplomacy to resolve the problems that led to the confrontation in the first place. This proposal from China was welcomed by the Russians. It's been welcomed by many countries in the global south, uh, as there are also peace plans coming from people from leaders of the global south, such as Lula and Brazil. But it's been rejected by President Biden, rejected by members of the Biden administration, rejected by the European Commission and the NATO allies, and of course, rejected by Zelensky, who takes his marching orders from the aforementioned people. Now, why did they reject it? Well, their goal is not peace. Their goal is to dismember Russia. Their goal is, from the beginning was to build up Ukraine as a military force to engage in warfare against Russia and increasingly to escalate the fighting to the point that there can be regime change in Russia. Now, this goes back to a, a number of, it goes back to the end of the Cold War when there was an attempt to dismantle Russia during the 1990s, uh, during the Yeltsin period. But since Putin has been in, Russia has become increasingly strengthened and is moving into a new economic dimension. In fact, into the possibility of breaking with the dollar system with other countries as the dollar system is being deployed against them. That is, they're weaponizing the financial system to defeat not just Russia and China, but any developing sector country which is trying to find means of credit for economic development. Now, in December 2022, there was a conference by the Jamestown Foundation and the Hudson Institute, and they put forward what they called a minimal goal and a maximum goal. Their minimum goal was to weaken Russia's central government. Their maximum goal, the complete breakup of Russia. Now, why would they want such a thing? Well, because on the one hand, Russia is going to insist on being treated as a sovereign nation and not give up its sovereignty to the global corporate cartels. But secondly, Russia has enormous natural resources, mineral wealth, as does Ukraine. And this policy was designed, you might call this the BlackRock option, privatizing these countries, stealing their and looting their raw materials the same way European coloni colonial powers did to Africa and South America and Asia for centuries. Now, these two foundations, the Jamestown Foundation and the Hudson Institute, have participants who move in and out of government, including in intelligence agencies, and military industrial complex companies. And these are the ones who are making the policy of the Biden administration. And they are insisting that there be no negotiated peace, that fighting must continue until Russia is defeated. Now, this is highly unlikely that Russia will be defeated. 
And if you listen to the, the more intelligent military analysts, such as McGregor or Scott Ritter, uh, even General Milley, they acknowledge that the, the best Ukraine could get would be a stalemate. But that's okay for these people because a stalemate means continued fighting. And what they want to do, they, they, they don't care about more dead Ukrainians or more destruction to Ukraine. Their goal is regime change in Russia. Now, one of their strategies is to escalate to an attack on Crimea. And among the advocates for this is the prominent British defense think tank, the Royal United Services Institute, as well as the neocon witch Victoria Newland, the Deputy Secretary of State for European Affairs. Uh, she's called for an attack, or the, the Rusi rather, called for an attack on Crimea because it would, ref, it would force what they call a Crimean missile crisis. And what do they mean? They mean that Russia would have to decide whether they would use nuclear weapons to defend Crimea or not, or surrender. And that's their goal. Now, this is what puts us closer than ever to nuclear war, as was indicated in the, the statement issued by Daniel Ellsberg the other day, who reported that he has maybe three to six months to live, but he wants to continue his efforts to stop the danger of nuclear war. And, and he said, we're closer today than we've ever been to nuclear war. And the reason for this is we have Dr. Strangelove personalities in Western governments. For those of you who are younger and don't know the Dr. Strangelove reference, this was a, a very insightful movie from, I think, the late 50s, early 60s, early 60s, I guess, uh, with Peter Sellers in it with an assortment of crazed characters preparing for a nuclear war with Russia. And one of the things Lyndon LaRouche has often said is never underestimate the factor of insanity when it comes to the oligarchical establishment. Now, all of this danger of nuclear war is occurring as the Western economies are facing a disintegration, a rapidly escalating disintegration and it's not just that they're using the war to change the subject from economics, but the war machine is designed to ensure that the looting can take place to keep feeding the corporations and, and to cover their debt. So what do you do if officials are crazy? You have to organize to remove them. And this is the should be the goal of the peace movements, which are beginning to gain strength in Western Europe and the United States. But to further their development, they need a strategy to link up with Russia and China with the Belt and Road Initiative, with the BRICS, with the Shanghai Cooperation Organization, with moves toward a new security architecture and a new economic development architecture that benefits all sovereign nations. Now, this has been the subject of Lyndon LaRouche's work for the last 50 years. And I, I'm going to give a link at the bottom of the description page to an article or a speech he gave in Jan on January 21st, 2003 in India, titled Globalization of the World Economy is a Prescription for Disaster. And he reviews the shifts in the world economy away from an emphasis on physical economic production, on science and technology, toward a consumer society which includes the replacement of physical goods production by a speculative economy backed up by neo-colonial looting of the former colonies. And he makes the point that this move would entail a post-industrial shift in the Western economies, which is now accelerating rapidly with the breakdown of industry. It's no longer just the outsourcing, but the actual breakdown. In, in Germany, for example, there's not enough energy to run the industrial economy anymore. And what he warned in that speech is that it will ultimately require the looting of the population in the advanced sector to provide enough to roll over the unpayable debts of the corporate cartels. And so the conditions that have been imposed on people in the developing sector for decades 
are, uh, those conditions are now being imposed through energy austerity and economic austerity on the population in the transatlantic region. And what LaRouche said that if this is not stopped, the deindustrialization which results combined with the expansion of indebtedness will lead to an economic collapse worldwide and a population collapse, in other words, depopulation. That's precisely the goal of the oligarchs who are behind this policy. And to use regime change coups and wars against any nation that resists their intention to do this. Now, that's why it's important for people joining with the peace movements now in the West to recognize that your enemy is not Russia or China. Your enemy is also not the nations of the global South. But you are the enemy of this corporate oligarchy, as are Russia, China, and the global South. And so it's incumbent upon the citizens of the advanced sector to rally their forces, to join a movement, to defeat this corporate cartel arrangement that's moving for a new post-Cold War order. And in LaRouche's speech, you'll see at, within it the solution where he talks about the West joining with Russia, India, and China. So I urge you, read this article. As soon as Helga Zepp LaRouche's new article is available, I'll, I'll provide a link for it. But this is the kind of discussion process we need as we put together a world that is uh, on the path toward a durable peace as opposed toward directing, uh, being directed into nuclear war. So thank you for joining me today. Do some work, do some reading, and I'll see you tomorrow. Hello, thanks for watching. Be sure to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so you don't miss any of our videos. Support our independence to produce videos like these. Become a member of the LaRouche organization at thelarouche.org slash member. By becoming a member for $25 or more, you'll get special access to the EIR Alert daily briefing and weekly magazine, which is what I read to stay on top of things.